I'm Sarah Goble and I have dedicated my whole life to dance. I'm Sarah Goble and I'm the owner and founder of Dentsu Dentsen. I felt there was a need for something different. I wanted to create a dancer that could be more versatile and also had the opportunity to get very, very different jobs. I'm very proud of the, the education. I know that it works so well. In 10 months, I, I graduate very professional dancers. Knowledge, discipline, awareness, taking that from the contemporary musicality out of hip hop, being more playful, that creates a completely different dancer with a completely different energy and approach. I wanna take the best part from contemporary and the best part from hip hop to create uh, the most, how do you say, brilliant dancer. <laughs>
I have floor bar today and physical training. That's nice. During the, the program, they find out, okay, she actually is very serious about what she's doing. Because she takes me seriously as a student. And that I really feel that my students are very happy for. There's a person who requires a lot from you. It pushes you to require more from yourself as well. And especially at Dance with Dansen, I know that Sarah's sitting there every day, looking at you, noticing all these different things, all these habits, not just movement habits, how you, you tackle different stuff in life. If you get booked, then you just have to be the mature professional dancer that you was taught to be. There is no plan B. Whatever you do is plan A as a dancer. It has to be a number one priority. It takes so much and it takes all of your, your focus, of your time. So be ready to sacrifice everything. Because literally you're going to be thrown out there and there's going to be people expecting everything from you and you got to be ready. Now living in London, my wildest dreams could come true tomorrow. I don't think I'm ever as happy as I am when I'm creating a yeah. piece of choreography or a piece of material or just moving or dancing in general. My name is uh, Tobias, Tobias Ellihammer. My name is Sebastian Skull. We both took the same dance education, dance with dancing by uh, Sarah Gobu. Five years now in total. It took maybe like a, a year or so for me to get established. And I had a really dry period that was really rough just when I moved. Um, but then I was lucky enough to book uh, Ariana Grande, Kaiser, Justin Bieber, Jason Derulo, Kylie Minogue as well. Definitely uh, been been enjoying working with artists. Work with Pink, Emery, Kylie, Ellie Golding. Uh, Yes, I did a tour with FK Twix, um, which was I remember that. insane. Flew to London, didn't know anyone, and she was one of my favorite artists at that time, still is. Crazy, booked the job, and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't be happier to, to have worked with such a, such a creative artist at such an early point in, in my career. I realized that I missed the, the art of creation. Damn, I don't really feel fully excited or like I don't feel the same way about performing yet, uh, anymore. I just started to get more critical about what I was doing on stage, why I was doing it, and the choices that were, were, were being made by the uh, creative directors and choreographers. That sort of, to me, was when I decided to switch over doing these conceptual videos, this trilogy that I've been creating for the past, I think, five years. Now, I purely just work with choreography, and it's, it's, um, it's an entire different feel, something that makes me way more happy. I got to create a direct yeah. for the first time on X-Facts, it was huge deal. Did a job for Google recently. Solo dance, music video, Christopher, Super Junior, Ian Payne, Bobby Merce. My proudest moment was just actually you know moving here making a choice for myself and standing up you know for my dreams and <laughs> yeah. everything that is so easy to say but so hard to do not being afraid of going out there and just you know whatever happens happens in the beginning of course if, if you feel kind of lonely uh, you, you can still i mean i have those days like Coming, coming and going. If you believe in yourself every step of the way, your journey will take you where you're meant to go. We're all, you know, different. We all go through different journeys. 
I started dancing when I was four years old, doing jazz ballet, and ever since I was seven or something, I knew that I was supposed to become a dancer. It came just very natural that I had to, and I wanted to express myself. My whole life, from I was six or something, I did capoeira. I was in doubt of where I should go or what I should do, but then I met Sarah. I was just very new to it and didn't know what to expect. It was very difficult in the beginning. I started dancing at three, I think. My parents decided to send me to ballet, which I thought was super boring, because <laughs> it was a little too strict for my crazy temper. Then I started doing hip hop when I was 10, 11, I think. And then it just went on from there. My first class was a, a break dancing class as well. Whoa! Yeah. So uh, we were like top rocking when I was only three years old. I started dancing when I was 11 years old. And I don't think I realized that I wanted to, you know, be a big part of the dance community and make it into my profession until after I finished the, uh, the education. In the beginning, coming in and just thinking, okay, I, this is how I know how to move. This is my limit. This is how far I can go. This is as big as I can dance. But even after like the first month, Sarah was able to fully just open my view. From the get-go, you're being thrown into this beautiful realm of different styles, different teachers, different educators, all were seen by Sarah the entire time. tailored into understanding yourself and eventually, like you're saying, understanding your own creativity and individuality. Realizing that, damn, I have a long way to go, but I'm at just the right place to, to get better. I think remembering choreo in the start was way, very difficult, and, and when you had to do it in groups and stuff, I got very nervous, and, and I actually still do sometimes. But then I think because I went so full out all the time, I started to learn it pretty fast because 
um, I didn't hold back. I was really doubting myself and my own talent. What kind of dancer am I? What do I feel good doing? People trying to fit into different types. I would never fit into this category of dancers. So I moved to Paris, started training a lot, and suddenly I was standing with a lot of tall dancers. And I was like, yes, this is where I belong. Crump dancing, house dancing, top rocking. It really gave me some encouragement and power to just be me. And then I auditioned for the education and started at the education when I came home in August. Rihanna is having this big audition in London and I'm at the education at the same time. So I was talking to some of my dance friends. Let's go, let's do it. Rihanna in London, I was like, no way, it's not gonna happen. And then we had to sign this uh, audition form and never got an answer back. Let's just go for it. Let's see what happens. We book the flight tickets, sleep two hours, take the plane. Then we ask for the dance department. So many people there. And the girls are like, just go and talk to them. And then they push me in the door. Hel hello. <laughs> it's because we heard there was an audition for Rihanna. And then he says, okay, girls, they already started the audition. And we were just told that they learned all the entire routine. And we just had to find someone that could teach us. But the thing is, this is a competition. So we're walking in. And we are like seeing a lot of faces just turning away from us, like, because nobody wanted to teach us anything. Then we were sent in with a French girl and a Russian girl that was just like, hot pants, bra, foundation like this, fake lashes, super styled. I was wearing a tracksuit, no makeup. I'm never gonna get this job. Bookers, choreographers, cameramen, executives, blah, blah, blah. And then they put the music on and they said, freestyle, one by one. I was like, what? <laughs> Freestyle? So I just did house, because that was my main thing. Literally, I don't remember what I did. What happened? Because <laughs> everything had went so fast from when we arrived to the place till we finished the, the audition. I think it was maximum 15 minutes. You'll hear from us later tonight. Is it okay if we straighten your hair? Yeah, it's okay. How do you feel about body paint? All right. Okay, goodbye. I was taking my mail, pling, I had this AMCK dance agency, like three lines. Dear Tony, congratulations, you booked the Rihanna Brit Awards 2012. See you tomorrow at Twittenham Dance Studio. Bam! And I was told that I should be prepared. Working in London is not always fun. And that people were very competitive towards, especially new people. So I was so scared. One of the best productions I've ever been to. It was like one big family. Usually when you train eight hours straight for nine days in a row, you would be super exhausted. But every time we had a break, it was just jam sessions. Having this as the first commercial job ever was just an experience I will never forget. You have a vibe that they feel. So don't try to fit into something that you don't feel you fit into. And they liked the vibe that I had. And obviously, this has been like the thing that they were going for in this job because all people there vibed really well together. It was also the human behind the dancer that was important in this job. It was just a huge experience. It was insane. It was insane. It can be horrible, but it can also be insanely fantastic and a beautiful experience. I know for sure that the professional dance world is very tough. We can start talking about how people value dancers, which is not good. It's a serious business being a dancer, and I think taking it seriously is very important as well. That's a big issue for the whole industry, that people don't take it serious enough. This kind of vibe that is only a hobby, so it's fine that you, do, that you don't get paid so well. Well, you can have a, a piece of clothes for doing this uh, commercial job. I'm like, no. It's not a real job, oh, but when is, when is he or she gonna have a real job? It comes from, from how people are dancing. They still do dance as a hobby. Of course, if they take that choice, that's fine. That's, you can always do that, but this, this thing about being, I'm a dancer, but I'm not really setting myself up for it. It's, it's a really bad habit. People should decide if they want to try it 
or don't want to try it. Of course, they can do it for a year and then say, ah, I wasn't that. Just that they really decide for this period, I'm gonna go for it, because then they're gonna take themselves more serious when somebody asks, do you wanna do this job? I was brought up in a, in a different culture of dancing. There were no mirrors whatsoever. We had the gramophone player, no Instagram and phones, we didn't film. So I learned from a very early age how it felt. More from the inside out than compared to now, it's more from the outside and in. Like going to a class, doing a wah bah bah, uh, showing off in front of a camera and post it on Instagram, it doesn't make you a dancer, I'm sorry, it doesn't. Unfortunately, I think that this is what is affecting the industry. People forget to train. They just go to class to look good. And there are so many teachers teaching a choreo and they forget about grooves, foundations, feelings, uh, connection. They just do like half an hour choreo 48s and then they do half an hour. Let's film it and put it on Instagram. For me, that is not dance. Enjoy the journey of Putting yourself out in a situation where you are Bambi sliding around, not knowing what you're doing. Because that is what makes you better. I think I'm always mostly motivated by breaking boundaries and trying to do something new and something that is yeah. um, that might be really uncomfortable and super awkward. I'm trying to push myself into the out of my comfort zone. My year is looking pretty free and I love that. For some people that's really uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think that that's also what tells you that you are in the right industry. Sometimes you do know, but sometimes you have no clue. Yeah. And there's something beautiful about And you that. have to love that. Mm. A lot of people have a hard time viewing it that way. Yeah. But you really have to get used to the thought of you not booking jobs for a certain amount of time or you might be booking a job tomorrow. Yeah. And how exciting is that thought? I really see it as limitless opportunities. I think the hardest thing is to actually stay true to yourself, to withstand the, the pressure that is being laid upon you yeah. on every single job and on every single uh, let down from an audition. As a dancer, it is incredible hard not to take anything personal because obviously you are being judged by what do you look like? It's rarely that you're being judged by your talent. It's hard for a lot of people to understand how um, how much terror that can sort of put on someone's soul when you constantly feel that you're being judged. Because it's your passion. It's your passion, and you're constantly being you you're being judged for something where you know that you have been educated, you've been training in styles and, and all these different things, but I just don't. Got the right look. Comparing yourself to others, remember that you are you and you have to be you. You shouldn't be anybody else but you. I think dancers also really have to remember that. Even though you don't get booked for all the jobs that so many other dancers get booked for, it doesn't mean that you're not a good dancer. It just means that you're another type of a dancer. You have to really stay true to yourself no matter what is popular. Do not do this to get someone else's approval and to be validated by someone else. The only person that should be validated by your own journey is your damn self. It should not be anyone else. Do it for the love and for the art, do it to make yourself happy. If you know for sure that you are there and you're gonna enter that environment because you are passionate about dance, you will always find a way and a path where you can go and put in your own creativity. And with that passion, you can also start changing and getting new things into the environment that you're not satisfied with. Because you have a different energy and a different approach and you, you have, you're so, so strong in your belief, so you all of a sudden show dancers a new way of being in that environment. There is no typical day for me um, at Dance Dance. I have many caps on. I'm the teacher, I choreograph. I do costumes. Most talented, creative human beings I've ever met. It's amazing to see how many roles this woman has. She's there every single day. She's following her students and the transformation. I am at the Dance Dancing every day because 
I'm very passionate about seeing the development um, of my students. And I think it's my responsibility to be there. Mentally, you go, you know, go through a lot, you know, but Sarah's there all the way with you. What happens in between classes is revealed in the classes. So there's a lot of talk and adjusting and taking care of and putting in a lot of fire in my students to help them when the going gets tough. Sarah is an incredible educator and teacher more than anything. She, she breaks you down so that you can understand and, and almost be reborn. And it's in the best way possible and you want to get to that point. Because I need to be there for them also to help them, you know, personally. She cares for her students and she, she dedicates everything to, to broaden the view on what they can do and, yeah. and what dance can represent and the creation process. A lot of different styles, like everything from house to experimental hip hop to regular hip hop to grooves to uh, African dance to Tai Chi. So I go in in every class and look and trying to teach my students that what you learn in, in a technique class is the same you learn in a dance class. It's the same that you learn if you're doing physical training. And suddenly you understand like, oh, the lift I get in floor bar, I can actually use when I do the house dance. And oh, when I reach here, it's like when I do it in physical training. When you educate yourself, you become a clever dancer in, in so many different ways. You become strong mentally and physically. And I think that is so important. It just does, it doesn't have, you don't get offered these things from a 90 minute workshop, masterclass, anywhere. No. You can't, you can't be taught these things from a one week program. People don't take care of you like that no. outside of, you know, outside in, in the industry. She definitely just embodies the whole mentorship role down to the like, bone. I, I don't think I would be where I am today if it wasn't for what I was taught. And understanding my own individuality and who I am as a, as a as an artist and, yeah. and understanding the industry and understanding what I can do. And especially coming from such a small country as well, seeing how many great dancers have come from this education, it really just proves that this is, you know, the real deal. She is one of the most important people in, in the dance community in Denmark and in Europe. I would mm. say I don't know or have heard of anything else that really speaks, you know, volumes when it comes to educating real professional dancers. I would never have been without it. I would have been a very shaky dancer, mentally and physically. At 15, I did a theater production. I think I was a little reckless. I hurt my knee and I didn't really understand what it was. This feels weird and I started going to a lot of doctors, had a lot of scans and stuff and they just all told me like there's nothing and it's all good and don't don't worry. So I was dancing with this thing in my knee that I felt. I had a magnetic scan which is an MR scan and they told me that my meniscus especially the, the one on the inside, was like completely broken um, and that I had to have uh, an operation. And then I had the operation, I woke up and the doctor came to me and said, I think you have to prepare yourself for not being able to dance ever again. I think I was 15 or 16 years old and I just saw my entire world fall apart. I really needed like a person that I looked up to to tell me that of course you can manage to do this. Sarah has had a lot of knee injuries as well so I talked to her and asked her what can I do and she was like the first person to tell me don't worry this is going to be all right and I think you can do a lot in order for you to come back and become a dancer if that's what you want. I was just being so stubborn because I wanted to prove all of these doctors wrong. Nine months, I think, of recovery and training before I was able to dance again. 
and I could dance and my knee was really good. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> I can pull through. It was um, such a victory. And like, I, I felt it was a very strong proof of mind over body. Being healthy and believing in it here really affects how your body reacts as well. So I could have gone the other direction to said, okay, I give up. I can't dance. The doctors tell me. I started at the education, did a lot of like physical training, floor bar, stuff that we do at the education. Wow, this is really the, the tools that I need. I was even more physical at the education than I was when I lived in Paris. And I had nothing, like no problems, no shin problems, no knee problems, no nothing. Staying away from injuries and I, I, I think like the whole knowledge that is being created about the body at the education really makes you a more clever dancer. If you don't have the technique, you will hurt yourself. Every year we have a graduation performance with a very high artistic level. Costume-wise, music-wise, light-wise, performance-wise. Every year I'm extremely proud to see my students from the very first day and the progress they have done ending up doing such a professional performance where I can see their very strong focus. So they learn a lot from the education how to behave in a professional production how to work together and to, to stay humble. You have to remember that a lot of my students haven't been on stage before. They learn how to create steps. So it's very much their material that is being used in the performance. And through that process where they learn um, this method that I develop, they really get to know themselves as who am I as a mover? Because a lot of them hasn't been creating steps before. This is what makes them more mature and getting to know, okay, I learned a lot from the first half year, now it's up to me. It's a little bit scary for some of them, but it's, it's always uh, ending up in a very, very nice performance that I'm, where I'm super proud because it's like they are creating the most beautiful material. So professional, so aware, so focused, so strong, so creative. And, and secure. Every year I'm super proud of sending out dancers that I know for sure can add something different to the environment. Clever dancers, very strong dancers and very and dancers who has a very personal style. There is so much focus on how you react and how you act in the industry. What you take with you when you leave the education is an awareness of how can we, as a community, make this industry better for all of us. It comes down to also um, professionalism and ethic and, and um, being represented in the best way possible. Being very aware, really trying to read what is what is needed and what is necessary to be humble, to speak up when it, when it's time for that. Being versatile enough to approach everything, really, all styles, all genres, movements being a team player, being creative on your own, being professional overall. And all these things are again like something that goes way back to the education because I remember being taught that as well. I've always had this dream and I've never doubted myself that I would become a dancer. For me personally, being a dancer is not just, it's not, you know, work, it's, it's, it's who I am. Finding, you know, my true self within dance is so, you know, important in a world where distractions is like the number one thing. It keeps me motivated just continuing to be in this realm of dance and trying to reach out and, yeah. and make other people feel something. I've, I've literally had 
dance taking me all over the world. It connects in so many ways and it's so much more than dance. Being vulnerable and being in your feelings and um, finding new feelings and uh, sharing with people. The hardest part, like emotionally, it's very hard for me every year to say goodbye to my dancers. I know I demand a lot from my students, but in the long run, when the year's finished, they see the whole benefit and they see the reason why it was so tough during the year. What you learn is something that you can use for the rest of your life.